in the process, I didn't know I was being overlooked. I was just ready to go hoop. I like playing basketball and I got an opportunity just ready to go. Michael Perry James, born August 18th, 1990. In 2020, Mike James sat down for an interview with Euro Hoops and when asked a question, is the NBA still a bucket list goal for him? He responded by saying, no, I was already there. I don't care no more. With that quote alone, you don't need a story on why Mike James isn't in the NBA, but because Mike James is one of my personal favorites of all time no matter what league, I could write a hundred stories about him as a player, mainly to my enjoyment. I've often asked that question myself after learning of Mike James, how does a guy so talented, has a game so beautiful if I could use that word judgment free, and has been seen up close and personal by the NBA? not amount to a lengthy and successful career at the highest level? The answer wouldn't come until years later. It's not that Mike James would turn down having a 15-20 year NBA career if things could play out again, but they can't play out again, leaving Mike James's professional career, the victim of circumstance and timing not being in his favor, when it comes to making and staying in the NBA. I also hope this story drives home the point that not because you don't make the NBA or wasn't able to stay at that level in the case of today's feature, mean you aren't elite at the game of basketball or you wasn't good enough to remain in the mix. There's great players all over the world, some better than what you have in the NBA. You can't tell me Xavier Rathon Mays or Mike James isn't better than Killian Hayes or Kyra Lewis. No disrespect to them, but different circumstances and timing are the only reason they've gotten opportunities other players better than them haven't. Mike James was listed at 6'1", but probably closer to 5'11", coming up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, while the game was still infatuated with big guards like Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, Tyreek Evans, Brandon Knight, and more. Pretty much the John Calipari big explosive high-ranking point guard product and getting one in your hands was the build of the time. Much like everyone now wants to find the new Wembenyama build or LeBron before him, Michael Jordan and all the way back. Mike James flew under the radar in that time, a late bloomer on the course of perfecting the craft of scoring while other skills were secondary. At his size, you can assume how that was a problem. Nevertheless, Mike James climbed his way from hardly any college offers, junior college for two years, low major division one school, and undrafted by the NBA to years overseas before he finally found his way to the top of the mountain, only to realize it wasn't so important any longer. Three real reasons why Mike James is not in the NBA. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Mike James is a listed 6'1 point guard from Portland, Oregon that was always known for his ability to make tough shots and also being a high flyer. But he flew under the radar all throughout high school, ranked just inside the top 200 prospects by his senior year, and had only Division III schools offering him a full scholarship. For Mike James, the journey had to start somewhere, that being all the way to the back of the line at Eastern Arizona College, where he averaged 20 points a game on modest shooting percentages, thus not standing out just yet. As a sophomore, he upped those averages to 26 and showed he could run an offense successfully with 4 assists, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals. For whatever reason, he decided on the unknown Lamar University, where he spent his final two years of eligibility. As a junior, he led his 13 and 17 team in scoring, albeit just 12 points a game, and was coming off the bench. As a senior, he was a starter and put up 17 points a game, 2 assists and 2 turnovers. The Cardinals did make the tournament, eliminated in the first round by Vermont. Stunt number 1, not cooked just yet. When I say timing and circumstance when it refers to basketball, you have to understand that if those two aren't in the mixture in your favor of the making the NBA journey, you may never get the opportunity to see that dream through. Mike James in the era he was in, right between the big explosive guard era and the deep shooting Steph Curry era where he changed the game for everyone, wasn't developed yet in either of those coming out of high school. 
Of course, the big guard thing he was never going to be, but what he needed to and could control was his shooting the ball. At Lamar, he didn't show that skill was cooked and ready to serve by draft time, shooting 35% from three as a junior, then having that average dip drastically into below average territory of 32%. With those shooting numbers representing you in 2012, especially seeing that the college three is much easier to shoot, was less than encouraging for NBA teams that could potentially draft him. Also at Lamar, he averaged just two assists, showing even at the small program, he wasn't a huge factor in the team's success. Add to that, he averaged more turnovers than assists, which is a nail in the coffin for NBA coaches because one thing you can't do as a point guard undersized at that is turn the ball over more than you help your team. To keep going, Mike at that point, even though it was his main weapon, wasn't necessarily considered an elite scorer either at 12, then 17 points a game. Everything was working against him leaving college, from size to shooting to taking care of the ball to scoring. It's no wonder he was overlooked in the 2012 draft and had to begin his pro career overseas. It wasn't teams saying he didn't have potential, but that he just wasn't ready yet for that level. Stunt number two, still checking the oven. You gotta love how Mike James's career played out mainly for his perseverance to endure being denied so often. That perseverance paid off in 2017, five years after graduating college, when the Phoenix Suns offered him a chance to play with their summer league team and potentially make an NBA roster. James impressed, leading the team in points 20 a game and assists 5 a game to go along with almost two steals. The Suns, of course, offered him a two-way affiliate deal, the first in franchise and NBA history. He was to split time with the Suns and their G League affiliate team, but the Suns needed Mike so bad he never was sent down to the Arizona Suns. He played 32 games with Phoenix and started 10 of them, averaging 10 points in 20 minutes, 3.8 assists to 1.5 turnovers and shot just 26% from three. This was shocking to see Mike shoot that poorly from deep because later on he'd become deadly from there, but it may have cost him his job nonetheless. He did have some good nights as a son, like November 26, 2017, when he scored a career-high 26 points in a loss to the Timberwolves. In January 2018, following the Suns waving Mike James a month earlier, he signed with the Pelicans on a new two-way deal, but lasted just four games before they too saw he still wasn't ready. He played four minutes a game with New Orleans, so really didn't have a shot to show much of anything. And this is the story of a lot of players you see overseas playing so well and you wonder how aren't they in the NBA. They simply wasn't developed yet, even after opportunities like the one Mike James had with an NBA team. Stunt number three, the grass isn't greener. Or should I say, on the table you're eating, so the oven really isn't so bad, sticking to the cooking theme. But Mike James made a decision many of us hoopers overseas that weren't exactly ready for NBA opportunities had to. You decide not to care anymore. To go on chasing other dreams and being content without the NBA. Mike James had three different experiences with the Suns, Pelicans and the Brooklyn Nets for 13 games during the 2021 season. In those experiences, James had the opportunity to compare those with his time overseas before, during and after those stints. What he came up with was now he'd just rather stay hooping overseas where he's a superstar in some of the toughest basketball environments in the world. For Monaco, Mike James just recently waived his right to exercise his NBA exit clause, which states that a player overseas can leave the team for the NBA only if offered a guaranteed contract. I have no doubt Mike James has teams calling and offering the guarantee for his service, but for what? To join a league already stacked at his position and highly invested in younger players he knows he's better than, but have to play behind? The NBA is just not as appealing for Mike James now like it was then, and at 32 years old, he's choosing stability, playing for the same team for what will be three years, his longest stint abroad with one team. All in all, I think Mike James is making the right decision. 
He's likely going to be paid much better overseas than as a 33-year-old journeyman in the NBA anyway, and at least he gets to play where he's comfortable and can finally hoop without the pressure of an NBA phone call. Salute, much respect to Mike James, one of my favorite players no matter what level, like mentioned. It's your boy JC Stunnick Growth, and I'm out.